so I can have an idea of what you guys are doing and what you're trying to accomplish so that I can cater what we talk about today. So let's start with you, young man. Hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Ed. Um, my name is Victor Servant. I'm from here in the Santa Cruz Valley. And um, just to uh, observe, learn, um, kind of take the different bits and pieces. And what I do is I'm working to become a public speaker, world class public speaker. And I'm also a fitness coach. I've lost 50 pounds and show people how to do it on their own and continuing to get better. I'm actually on a specific strategy this month. So. I'm, I'm, your, I'm your before picture and you're the after. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my name is Kelly Green. I'm a realtor here with Realty Executives. I primarily work in the Santa Clarita Valley. Um, in addition to that, I've been donating photography to nonprofits for over 10 years and I'm active at Real Life. I'm active in the <laughs> <laughs> My name is Glenda Thompson Bona. Hi, you guys. Mm -hmm. um, I have worked in a lot of different areas, starting in radio and television. I had my own business in corporate training. Um, I worked in healthcare training. And right now, I'm selling, as of this week, educational travel. So it's a new thing for me, and it is commission based, and that's why I'm kind of interested. Educational travel? Educational travel. Probably. I have trips to Washington, D.C., or to New York, or Florida, Costa Rica, things like that. Well, my name is Grace Lee, and I have a company called Grace Lee International, and we teach international etiquette and Western etiquette. What? E etiquette. Etiquette. Social graces. Social graces? Yes. And, and you um, teach Western social graces? Are you okay? Yes, Western social graces. Being graces. polite, um, social, uh, custom, yes, uh, customs, yeah. how, how, to, how to sit properly, how to handshake, how to yeah. eat yeah. properly. Oh. You know, each culture is very different. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So my background is uh, in Japan. I'm born and raised in Japan, oh. and I came here. So I'm here to see I what I propose right now is for people to be in, in their own business. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be perfect. It's hard to get fired. Yes, it's hard to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Okay. Oh, it's my Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, um, no, I'm, uh, no, I'm just a student now. And, uh, but, uh, Can you pronounce your name for me, please? Okay, sure. My name is Xiao Hong. Xiao Hong. Uh, uh, Xiao Hong means dumb. Early morning. Okay. Yeah, and I, I'm from China. Uh, almost six years here, and uh, I I do I did work in, um, uh, before. I worked uh, like almost uh, more than ten years, fifteen years like that. I worked in international business, and uh, but I worked for somebody else. Always for somebody else. Was it import export or? Yeah. Well, I was in China, I worked like an uh, import. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, export. Mm -hmm. uh, then when I was here, I worked in the ex uh, import. Oh, uh, no, also export. Oh, oh. Yeah. but uh, when I was in China, we export yeah. something. We ex export something to here. We export food to here, mm -hmm. our, our other country. But uh, I worked here in Pasadena, is export uh, something to China. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Then I. Uh, 2007, when I got married, I quit my job, <laughs> but I don't know the, the economics goes down, so mm -hmm. I'm so stupid, I should check that. Mm -hmm. Then I quit my job when I moved here, and then the, the, the economics goes down, so it was going down, so uh, no the job is less and less. No jobs. And no, and, but I didn't look for too, too hard. Why? Because A, I need to study. B, I don't want to work for somebody else anymore. <laughs> I, want, I just want to, you see my eyes, I don't have good study. Why? I'm always turn over, turn over, turn over. I said, what am I going to do? I'm all, what am I going to do? My God, please tell me, good God. So this is why I'm always turning over. It's only this kind of thing that bothers me. So I come over here, want to know. I have some idea, but uh, because I never know the market. And I also never know how to do it. So I come over here, I want to learn like yourself in okay. how to do it and what kind of information. We'll see what we can use some information to walk away with today to help you. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm 
I'm Jessica. Uh, I'm I'm kind of here just to see to learn to see what's out there. Mm. Are you working there. right now, Jessica? I am. Um, I'm a full time student, and I'm also I have a full time job as an office assistant for a manufacturing mm. company, and I'm a part time math tutor for a private school. How do you deal? And I go kid. So busy. I do have a very 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 busy life, but um, when I finish school, I mean my my main goal is to open my own company. Mm. So I do want um, to learn the. And well, in 45 minutes today, we will tell you everything you need to know about opening your own company. Yeah. Okay, a lie. A salesperson. No, but we will give you some background of, of what you need to do to maybe avoid some of the mistakes. I'm going to give you a little background on me because I'm a cautionary tale or a hero tale. Um, born out here in Los Angeles, born in Hollywood. I grew up in Granada Hills. Um, moved out of the house I lived, lived in for 18 years. Um, I've been an entrepreneur since I was nine. Uh, I... When, at the age of nine, I had ten steady gardening jobs, a paper route, I worked at a local bike shop repairing bikes, and I worked at Mel's Landing, which was a famous restaurant in the valley that people waited three hours to eat. Um, didn't know back then that I was ADD, so whenever I got too much work going on, the schoolwork got too I had to quit my jobs and sort of start doing my schoolwork and then work my way back and start juggling plates. I've always had more than one thing going on at a time. It's just that's the way our brains work is that we have to be stimulated. Um, zoom forward, I'm 50 years old. I've had uh, a multitude of jobs. I have been unemployed. I have not been employed by somebody else for over 16 years. Um, before 16 years ago, I owned a phone company that I had gotten involved with 10 years earlier. And I sold about 3,000 phone systems. Uh, my career has been, for the last 26 years, being a phone consultant. And I'm one of the top telephone guys in the Western United States. At least I was until about eight months ago. Um, my claim to fame has been I've always made something from nothing. And I've always thought through what I was trying to accomplish. So I haven't had the typical failure experience that most business people have. They say you'll probably fail in business five times before you find that ideal business. Mm -hmm. I haven't had that experience. Probably because I didn't get into stuff that I didn't know what I was getting into and I ran the numbers out before I got started. And if you're thinking about going into business for yourself, you need to look at the numbers first. Not what you're gonna provide that'd be really cool that might benefit people. You really need to figure out how many of these things do I have to sell? What do I make when I sell them? How much time will it take me to sell them? Uh, where am I gonna get my product? Will it be stable? And I can tell you that if you're looking to start your own business, the best business to go in, is something that will involve you selling a product versus you making a product versus you designing or writing software. Because when you're selling a product or you learn to do something in an industry where you're moving the item, you can always find another buyer and you can always find another product. If you do something where you're in an industry there's a chance they will go obsolete, the best vinyl record maker probably could not keep himself from from losing his career somewhere along the line and all those things that press vinyl records, he had to wait 30 years before people started making vinyl records again and it'll never be what it used to be. And if you go down the line, he moved to cassettes and then he moved to CDs and then he moved to DVDs and now he's on you know, Blu-ray and uh, the guy that did the, the digital disc that kind of got in trouble. But when we're doing um, a plan for our life, whether you like it or not, you're all in sales. Whether you have to sell yourself every day or sell yourself once to get a job. Um, all depends on you know how good you are and how much you produce every day. Um, each of you have different di different items that you want to sell. I'm not quite sure what career she's going to go into. You know, I kind of know your skill set. I, I kind of know yours. Um, let's talk about if you're in an industry that's in trouble or or is not as busy it used to be real estate. Okay, right now if you're a real estate agent, you're actually like an actress. Because you say you're a real estate person, but you're probably waiting tables at night. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> a lot of them have changed careers because there's less houses being sold. You know, mm -hmm. it's not ducks in the barrel. There's ten houses and there's five realtors putting bids on them. Mm -hmm. In the next couple of months, there'll be a lot more houses to sell because they're going to finally break loose all the houses that are owned by the banks. So you, as a realtor, if you've been working really hard for the last six months gathering people that want to jump into the market, you may do very well, but you, you had to pave the way. You had to... Decide, you know, how many people am I going to talk to? Do they like me? Are they going to call me? And brand yourself. Now, I'll zoom forward. I own a phone company. 
I actually own five companies. When I said I've been unemployed, I haven't been hired by an individual company or gotten a W-2 for over 26 years. Eh, maybe 20 years. I own the company. I got some paychecks. Um, every day I have to think about what am I doing with my time in order to make the money to pay my bills. And what am I doing to add value to those people that I'm doing business with to make them want to come to me first no matter what's going on. In November last year, I bought 25 score. I personally don't believe in marketing. I believe in sales. Marketing is when you go out and get your name and brand yourself. And sales is when you go out and convince people you have a solution to a problem and they want to buy it from you. So when I bought 25 score, buying a marketing company seemed kind of silly, but I didn't consider it a marketing company. It's basically a company that takes your businesses, promotes them with a discount to a bunch of people that bought cards that want to buy stuff at a discount. So I have an invested person that bought a card that will be able to go to 650 merchants and save money, as well as Disneyland and all these other things. It seems like you know, a pretty logical thing to do, but not very many companies are doing that. You know, you have AAA would be an example of towing and discounts. But you know, I looked at it and I flipped it upside down. The company was probably in trouble when I bought it in, in November because the person that bought it didn't understand what it was that they were doing. It's currency. You have to build more businesses and more members. The more you have, the more valuable it is. When I add Jersey Mike's as a vendor, that's another $2 million worth of food that will be discounted to you that has the card. So every day my business goes up in value as you buy a card or you buy a thing. So I had to run the numbers out and say, how many people will I need to have as members when I bought the company and how many uh, businesses will I have to have in order to make that card valuable now? Well, the secret of mine is I only need one business. Because if you go there every day, you'd save enough to save 20 bucks. But I have 650. My job is to expose the ones that people don't know about to the people that have the card. All right. With your businesses, you have to figure out who's doing the work already. Are they making enough money? Do you have time or expertise to sell the product? You know, personal training. You know, he, he can't sell his business. You build it up, you make a million dollars a year, you still can't sell your business because you are it. When you go on there, they, they hire him because it's a product he sells by hour. And when you build your business plan, you have to decide, am I going to do something that I'm the only person that can do it? And will I build the model so that I can only sell a certain number of hours a day? The ideal business is, go ahead, go ahead. I'm um, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Does anybody have an extra piece of paper to take it? Oh. So when you design a business plan, when you start to go into business for yourself, you have to decide how much capital will I need to buy the stuff I need to buy, and will I need to buy enough of it so that I have inventory. And the ideal business is something you don't have to inventory, that you can get the product anytime, it's relatively exclusive, that I can, you know, when you're doing a service, you are the product. So you have to decide, do I want to go into a business where I'm going to be busy all the time selling my hours? Or will I train other people to sell my product and provide the services and I get paid for marketing their services? So there's so many different categories for you to, 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 to look at. But the least expensive business to go into would be one that you're not required to buy product and resell it. That the product is shipped once it's sold and you make a margin on it. And when you start thinking about buying a business, you know, these multi-level marketing companies where they require you buy a certain amount of product so you can sell it, you end up and you have to buy a certain amount every month. I need to let you know, if you're going to business for yourself, multi-level marketing may not be the way to do it. It all sounds fun and exciting, but they all by law are required to show you how many people actually succeed. But before, they didn't have to. And the statistics are not very good. 3%, 3% of every multi-level marketing company that's out there actually make over 100000 a year. 3%. Wow. Okay? Doesn't matter what business you look at. If you're a top 3% person, you can build your own brand in anything, and you may not have a downline of 50,000 people to do it. But the other 97% actually average around 2,400 a year. And they usually spend 3,600 in product in order to be commissionable to 2,400. So if you're going to build a business for yourself, you should rely, and then when you finally make 100,000 a year, the company gets sold because now it's a billion dollar company, and now you've lost your income and got to start all over again. You take your team to the next new if you want a new religion, do multi-level marketing. You'll find a lot of friends that believe the same stuff you do. And you'll go on trips together because that's what you'll get, trips instead of money. 
But, uh, but a lot of people look at it because it has a low entry fee. For $400, I'm now in business. I have a business card. And for a lot of people, it's like a franchise. You, you don't know how to start a business yourself. They will coach you along the way and make it duplicatable. But the reality is, is you're going to put a lot of time in before you start seeing money come out, and you may not survive the food. Not talking against them, just saying if you're going to go to business yourself, and you think you're that top 3% and you have 20,000 people that want to buy something from you, the odds are one of them would have hired you for 100,000 a year. So you may want to sell yourself to them instead of selling a product. The people just starting out in business, you know, you're juggling. I have a secretary who works for me, has a young child. She, um, I found her, she was my dog watcher. She's actually one of my key employees now. She had a baby at 20, she's 21 now. She had mad skills that we didn't know about. I hired her to call all 800 merchants. That was her only job. She now runs my website. She runs the constant contact. She's contacting all the customers. She does sales. She does all these things because she had the skill set. So if you're going to go to work for somebody or you're going to go into business for yourself, go to work for somebody doing something similar to what you want to go into so you can learn as much about it as you can. And if you want to be a personal trainer, find the best personal trainer out here and find out how he markets his products. Work with him as his top trainer. And then later on, when it's time, go out on your own. Real estate, follow the most, the most uh, powerful real estate people out here and, and follow what they're doing. Neil call and Nate Butcher and some of the others out here that you can't throw a rock without hitting their face. The branding themselves. Um, with your product, you have to find a 40-second commercial to figure out how do I explain what the heck I'm selling. Mm -hmm. Now, all of you, when you're designing your business, if you can't figure out how to say in a minute, Succinctly, where they're shaking their heads going, oh, I get what you do. You shouldn't be in that business. So really study how you introduce your business to people. Now, um, I said I don't like marketing. I've been running five businesses. I have my ad budget for marketing has been almost nothing for all of them. And I can list off what I do. I own a phone company that sells phone hardware. I am partners in a company that does data and voice services. And that's residual. I make my money, most of it from residual income stuff that I sold three years ago that people are still paying for their bills. If you can find a business to go into that they buy it once and you get a residual monthly and you control the destiny and the service that's being provided, that would be the best business to go into. Because then you don't have to work every hour, you're not billing by the hour. If you saw a $100,000 project and you make 10% and you're getting you know, $10,000 a month, you're pretty set. You can go do whatever you want and keep working at new things you want to do. You said you roll over at night wondering what you're going to do. I don't sleep either. But the problem I have is I have too many ideas and not enough time to implement them. When you're rolling over, you should be thinking about yeah. what it is you have as far as a skill set and find a problem and fix it. Okay. No, I just because I must find something to do that I can have good sleep. Otherwise, <coughs> what are you passionate about? Because I need a, I need a career. I know, but what, it, what, what uh, well, excites you as oh, far as things is, that you do? Yeah. You mean what I really want to do? Right. I, and this is my trouble sometimes. I, I, I'm not trying I, to put you on the I spot. Know, I okay? have I just, like a several idea, for example. Just give you an example. Like, uh, I, I like uh, I like the organization, the non-profit, that kind of thing. Education or training the people. I don't care like to, I don't want to make many money. I want to make like money just like my salary and can help people. Can help people, uh, especially international kind of. Uh, okay. So like, like, okay. Yeah. What makes you passionate? <clears throat> what are you passionate about? When um, <clears throat> with when my students come back and say I got that job or I'm being successful because of the social graces that I taught them. Okay, so you, 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 you really, you, your big energy is off empowering people to be better. Absolutely. Okay, what, is, what, what excites you? Well, um, I would say that I am passionate about business and negotiation and real estate. Um, I, I enjoy the service aspect of photography and real life. And so really, I feel like I'm in my passion right now. Best place to be. You know, what are you passionate about? <laughs> Even on the spot. Um, We're friends here. It's, a, We're friends I, 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 promise? it's something you should say. I promise. I promise. <laughs> we'll make fun of you. No more basket weaving is my passion, too. Um, I have a lot of passions. Um, you keep mentioning marketing. That's actually what I want to do. Um, 
that's my, my major actually. So I am very passionate about, um, I, I'm passionate about business in general. I want to learn about how a business works and how a business functions and the dif different aspects of a business. Um, and then I'm also very passionate about math and helping my students um, succeed. So. The reason I'm asking what you're passionate about is that most businesses, when you meet them and you see them on the news or the interview, and look, oh, this girl. I met a girl at the, the last seminar I was here. It was, I think it was Dream and Discover. He ran it. Uh, young girl, 23, what's her name? The one that does the babysitting in Hawaii? Mm -hmm. Kathy. Kathy. Kathy, blonde girl, you meet her on the street. You think that, you know, just another college student. She came up with an idea to provide a better service to parents that can't get babysitting in a timely manner and it's really difficult to do anything when you're, you can't trust your kid with anybody. And she basically wiped out all the other baby and services on the islands. And she just went national. She's only been doing it about three years. She started on her credit cards. Dropped out of college to do it. Dropped out of college to do it. She's got a multi-million dollar contract in the United States. She's franchising it nationwide. She's the most expensive babysitting service on the planet. But if you want a babysitter, you can get one in a half hour in Hawaii. You call them, get somebody who's educated, they charge 35 an hour to babysit. Your kids will come out as geniuses an hour later. I don't know. But she, she, came, she came up with a market that wasn't cheaper. She came up with a better quality service. She had a lot of fun doing it. Her passion was is that she wanted parents who were single parents or parents that needed to get a break to uh, have a quality service they can trust. Everyone that I've ever met that's successful did um, well because they had a good why. So in your, in, your, in your comment that I just want to get a job and a career, you need to find something. You told me the real honest thing you want to do is you want to work with nonprofits and such. And you want to help people and that you don't care whether you make a lot of money, but just enough to subsidize your income. Like help people the self-improvement. I want right. to help people. You're in the same business she's in, but just a little different. You find that they are, they are goals early, not like my age, too late. Right. And it's never too late. Although I do say people don't change. We are what we are. I mean, if you go back and look at yourself when you're eight, you're still the same person. You still think the same way. If you're a, a taker, you're still a taker. If you're a giver, you're still a giver. You've been beat up a little bit so you don't give as quick. If you're a taker, you've lost all your friends. I mean, you know, you, you learn to be less of what you are that's abrasive to be able to get along. But the reality is that if you're lazy, you're going to be lazy. No amount of money you don't have is going to motivate you to be a high achiever. If you're a high achiever, nobody can hold you down. There's literally nobody can get in your way. No one's ever tried to get in my way along the way. But, but if you're abrasive and you're a backstabber and you're not trustworthy, you will be knocked down every single time. So if you've got those in your personality type, you need to mask it and never let anybody know. It's not that you're not selfish and greedy anymore. It's just that you're not going to be able to do very well if people know it. So we all have to adapt our businesses and ourselves to be more effective with what we've got. You know, if you're not a brainiac in math, like she is, you know, you tutor. My son, my son is not me. He's 22 years old. He just, he's graduating soon with physics engineering. Obviously, I never would have made it. Um, he did tutoring in high school. He did tutoring in college. He's not asked me for money for the last six months. I'm, I'm stumped. Either selling drugs or he's got good jobs. <laughs> He has uh, an income from repairing computers on Craigslist, and he's got an income from tutoring. And the tutoring guy offered him to sell his company. Sounds similar to the babysitting person. He recently landed a job with a company of 20 employees, and all the people that were in that company have been in large companies for over 20 years. He's the only intern there that is, and they're paying him 25 an hour to start out. So he's, his dad was an example of an entrepreneur. He wants to go into business rather than engineering. But you have to have a personality set that you work with. If you know you don't have the skills for marketing or the language set, you need to find something that you can sell to somebody who wants to buy it that's going to understand why you're doing it. If you say, I'm just doing it for the money, nobody's going to help you. <coughs> my passion, and it's on my Facebook and it's in everything I do, is that I want to leave everyone I meet better than, I, than they were when I found them. My employees, my friends, girlfriends, business partners. I've never been litigated in 40 years in business. I put in 3,000 phone systems. No one's ever sued me. I'm not worried about the <laughs> not really If someone wants to sue me today, go ahead. But, um, but I've never taken more than I've given. So if you were to say, I'm always going to add value and reciprocity will be in play, you will do much better in business than saying, I need this. Please help me. How can I help you? 
you'll help me. I'm not worried about that. The other thing is when you go into business, you need to figure a way to know what you're, you're worth and make sure you negotiate it up front. So if you go to work for somebody, my advice to anybody who's unemployed right now is approach local business people and things that you care about. Find out what they're having problems doing. Approach them and give them a solution that gives you an easy entry. Meaning, I'll work with you for a week for free. Show me everything you need to get done that you haven't gotten done for six months. I'll try to attack it. At the end of the week, we'll discuss whether I'm worth hiring. And then you sit down and write out a contract. I'll be an independent contractor. I'll be your glue. I'll do all the things that are on the list that have never been done. And you will accomplish some of the things that are really pissing you off. Will you hire me for it? This guy did that. He's, he's here for 30 days. I would never hire somebody that I knew was going to leave in 30 days. Would you? He's already, what, 7,000 words into a sales manual that I never would have written. So if you, you go to an employer and say, look, I have skills. I'm unemployed. I want to help you. You decide what it's worth to you. And the chances are they're going to pay you more than you would have asked. Because in their mind, they never would have gotten to it. So let's talk about some of the careers that we can help you. In real estate, you need to set yourself aside and that people have to actually love you and trust you that in the biggest purchase they make in their life, they're going to be able to. And the most important thing is they have to remember you. You sold my house five years ago. There's a good chance they don't know your name anymore. The biggest fear I have as a phone guy is 20 years from now when a guy wants to buy a new phone system, he forgets my name and doesn't call me. Ironically, people remember when I am after going into a restaurant for 20 minutes, so my fear doesn't happen very often. But once in a while, I'll call someone, and they bought a phone system last week, and they didn't call me. It's just they forgot. So there's a lot of ways. But for real estate, we have a plan. And I'm not going to pitch it, but we'll talk to you after the meeting today about what we do for real estate to make sure they don't forget you. It's a, it's a killer idea, but I don't want to have a you know, pitch it. But at, and I'll tell you as an employer what I'm looking for. I've employed people for the last 26 years. The biggest, I had 40 employees. And I'll tell you what I've never heard. And if you're working for somebody later and you're in a job and you've been there for a year and you started at $10 an hour and you think you deserve a raise, write this down. Hi, boss. I've been here for a year. When I came here, I knew what. I knew how to answer the phones. I knew how to file. Now, I can sell your orders. I can process your orders. I've come up with three ways to save you 100000 a year. I write down the things that you've added value to over the last year. And you tell them, all I want is a 25% raise to compensate me for the stuff that I'm now doing that I wasn't doing when I walked in. I have told my employees, this is what I want to hear, and they've never told me. It's interesting. You tell them how to get a raise. You tell them exactly what to say. And still, they wait for me to give them a raise when I know they're worth more money, rather than saying, I need to make more money and I deserve more money. When you get in your own new business, you have to decide, what am I worth an hour? If you sit down and pencil out that I need to make uh, $4,000 a month to make my nut, and I need to talk to 350,000 people to find one that can afford to buy a house, I decide how many hours I have in a day, can I possibly talk to 350,000 people? And the answer is no. I, I, I may want to just look at something else to make money with me while I'm waiting for the market to turn around. The reality is not as many people can buy a house because they can't afford to, they can't get a loan. The house is worth less than what the buyer wants to sell it for. You finally get someone to buy it and then the loan falls out. There's too many obstacles to actually get your paycheck to, to be able to rely on it as much as you used to. But if you're smart, you pre-qualify all your buyers, you make sure you see that the paperwork, you only have people with you, so when you go out and make an offer, everyone in the community knows the person that's making an offer from you has already been totally nailed down, and they'll accept your offer even if it's lower because they know it's not gonna fall out. Your reputation as a realtor should be that your goal is to know that you're gold. Someone comes with you in an offer, you pre-qualify it, and everyone in town knows that I don't bring crappy buyers. You'll have more offers accepted even if they're lower. Because the other guy, is. BS. He doesn't have a loan in place. He's just lowballing to try to get the house or highballing because he wants to lock it up. But you need to find out what the problems are in real estate, solve them, and publicize the heck out of them. Get a tagline that says, I'm gold, it will be sold. Uh -huh. I do that all the time. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. I'm gold, it will be sold. <clears throat> um, but you need to figure out how to package yourself. So starting out in business, first thing you have to do is find out, tell yourself realistically, and this is what nobody ever does, how much do I need to make to not be on the street? 
pay my bills. And then you mark it up 30% because you have un un unknown expenses that you don't even know about. And then you take that number and you flip it upside down and say, how much do I make on each transaction? Mm -hmm. And you figure out how many transactions you need to make. If you can make $10,000 per transaction and you know you can do it two a month, you're in no trouble. But if you're only gonna make, you need to know what you're gonna make. And how many times, by our show of hands, how many times have people got involved with something, got excited about it, had no idea what they would make if they did exactly what they told you to do? I have. You have to look at the numbers. And most people don't because, they, 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 you know, it's a great idea. Everybody needs wedgies that will hold you high in the pool so you're, you're, you're underwater. And I think everybody will buy them. And, you know, and, I, and I'm talking to the person, I see them at the dollar store already. I mean, he hasn't even manufactured. And I already see them at the dollar store. Unfulfilled dreams. Yes, sir. The other half that is containing the creep of the expectations. So if you start and the value of what you wanted to do up front was X dollars, and the other side of the party keeps asking you to do more and more and more without additional compensation, right. you start working for less and less. Correct. That's not a fair bargain. Now, people respect people that know what they're doing. If you know that certain types of people are going to suck the energy out of you and you're just trying to get a job because you're trying to sell your first deal, make sure your contract and your agreements totally put down the scope of work. As your realtor, I will qualify you as a buyer. I will get what you're looking for, get down the parameters so I won't show you homes I know you won't like simply because it's in my listing. I will Make sure your, your spouse is on, on, online with you with what you want to buy so you won't be bickering on appointments about whether this house fits. I will make sure that you can afford the house you're trying to buy. I will give you a plan so that you don't buy the house and I have to sell the house as a short sell six months from now. I will protect you in this transaction because that's the biggest job I have to do. I will recommend that you have an attorney involved with the paperwork and that you already have an insurance agent to do the insurance because it won't close without it. Can I have a question for you on that? I mean, most people don't want to pay for an attorney to um, do a real estate transaction. And so when well, you say, it's I stupid. would recommend that you get an attorney. Right, and you can tell them that, you know, you find an attorney that will do it at a reasonable cost, and you refer them to them. Because it's a big purchase, and a lot can go wrong. Partner up with an attorney in exactly. the city and say, I'm going to give you 50 contracts with you. Would you give me a fixed price to review a real estate contract for two hundred dollars? Right. Now, and it, now was, there's no open-ended legal and contract. Even, and even and even more creative than that is you just say in the closing cost, if the attorney's willing to work on contingency, if the deal closes, you pay him out of the closing cost, just like you do the homeowner's insurance or any other. Don't payment. don't give him a reason to say no. Just line. Yeah, it all but up you want to protect them because a lot of times there's things in the house that are not. Disclosed. There's there's issues, and I'm not an attorney, so I can't tell you what they are. But I know that most people that do sell their home by themselves get into trouble, and most people do it without an attorney get into trouble. It's the same thing as living will, right? If I went to a living will seminar. If you have, you guys don't have assets enough. Everyone should have a will and a living will, because simply because the state shouldn't get your crap. You mean a trust? A trust. A, at least a will to give instructions with you. You should have a trust. Let's say when I die for any reason, it right. goes here of my choice rather than the state saying Correct. You I have, have an will, ancestor I've never met that gets all my estate. It doesn't matter what you said to anybody. Your stuff's tied up for a year and everything you own will be gone because they have to make payments on everything you own and so they sell it. And that's the same thing with a business too. When you open a business and start your own business and running a really successful company, you got to think about like what if someone passed away or succession or, plans, exactly. You right. have to have a plan in place that says if X and Y happens, insurance is based how I'm covered. You know, so. These are all things you worry about as you're building your business. But you know, I remember, and I was sitting in class uh, 30 years ago, and Harry Goldman who was a very charismatic small. I only had two classes that I think were about valuable in college. One was accounting. And the other one was small business management. And I remember sitting at the desk like you are right now, thinking to myself, oh my God, why would anybody go into business? What you have to do to comply with taxes and accounting and, and fees and registration, it's like giving birth. I totally forgot. And I went into business for 30 years. But the things you have to do to be in business, not just sell and make money, but to comply with what the government wants you to give them when you actually make money, is overwhelming. So you just need to know, as going into business for yourself, will I need to actually um, be able to comply with these things? I'm cheap. I don't have a living trust. I'm thinking about it every day. But the amount of money it will cost my family if I drop dead right now 
is massive. It'll cost me three grand to get a living trust from one that's good, and twelve hundred from somebody who is probably okay, but just as smart himself as well. It's worth the three grand. It is. And half of your estate. And you know, not seventy percent, eighty percent of the people do not have trust or wills. If you do the twelve hundred, you're going to do all the work yourself. And Correct. And but I don't mind doing that. I could say I have kids. I have, you know. It's all on the computer. Yeah, but without it, half of your estate disappears. So. Right. right, easily. You know, and I'm already an executor of another estate. So I'm thinking, okay, if I drop dead and they drop dead, this money goes to the state, and that would really piss me off, even if I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> I just I have the thing about taxes uh, that are so bad that I'll come back as a ghost and start knocking people over. You know, I just don't think we should be taxed to death. And you should be scared. I'm coming at that. But um, and I hope I didn't ramble too, too much. I don't know what we're talking about. Oh, we have seven more minutes here. I don't know what yeah, the questions. Something. Uh, one of the things that you haven't even mentioned is uh, that comes to me is the fact that you are in my house every day at least once a day on Facebook. Yes. You use social marketing. That's the next class. Media. Okay. So no, I'm just kidding. Okay, no, but I, I can talk about. It. Okay. I've been a networker since I was a little kid. I went up and talked to everybody at the store, yeah. or whatever. Um, I need to tell you a story. In 1977. I was, and I'm very much like Mitch, I'm the un-whatever. This is the un-seminar. Totally I was the un-car club. I had, I was on the CB radio, I was a blabbermouth, I drove around the city in the San Fernando Valley, my handle was the beat up mobile. Okay? I, my voice is very high, I don't look like my voice, I look like a tall skinny blonde guy, I know that. And sometimes they ask me, do you want fries with that man at the drive through ah. It's a little bit on that spectrum where I, mean, I, I might be perceived as a woman. But yet that voice was very famous in the San, San Fernando Valley during the 70s, 1977, 78. I could go anywhere in the San Fernando Valley and click and say, breaker please, and someone would say, go ahead, Ed. It wasn't something I planned to do, it was just because I was running around. The CB radio, there were 20% of the population on the radio talking, and 80% never spoke a word. Mm -hmm. They just sat there listening. Mm -hmm. They knew who you were, they knew where you were. If they didn't like you, you would be a dead person <laughs> because they know every word, everything you've done and what you've done. Same thing with blogs today. Most people just read them, but they never comment. Same thing. Zoom forward now. Yeah. You know, And I always had three digit initials B U M. Now, ironically, I, I, I have a leadership type personality, but we sat in a house one day. And we had 20, 30 people there, and they said, we should have a club for all the people who have, don't have cool cars, and we'll call it the beat-up mobiles like Ed's handle. So we created a shirt and a list, started with 30 people. We had 52 by the time we were done. We had black shirts. The shirt said B, period, U, period, M, period. Does that sound familiar? And then it had a handle that said beat-up mobile or Night Rider or whatever underneath. We printed these shirts for 10 bucks a piece. We would call one person on a Saturday and have seven, 75, 80 people at the park wearing their black and white shirts, have a bum picnic, and we did this through the summers of 77, 78. So I, I was into that. I had fun with that, and then I went to college, and it all went away, and I still know probably 20. We actually have a Facebook page of the bum people. If you go to my Facebook page, look at the pictures, you'll see I'm not lying. You'll see me with my Jufro, this big, and you'll see it with uh, the shirts on and all these kids that are now 50. But zoom forward now, that is a social thing that happens. People listen and people talk. The ones that talk have some relevance. The internet is built off relevance. I never would have thought a year ago that 30% of all my business correspondence would come through Facebook's email. I would have actually called you a liar if, I, if you told me one. But right now, the order of things I check right now are probably text, because it's immediate, yeah. then Facebook, then the 2,000 emails in my inbox. Now, 2,000 emails sound intimidating, but a lot of them are reporting that I'm asking for. It's not people calling me and emailing me, I want a phone system or I want to be a merchant. It's, you know, this site did this, this site did that. So I delete them after I've looked them over. But, but to, 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 to go to your point, if you want to brand yourself for free, put up a Facebook with your name on it, friend people like me that have 1,600, 1,800, 1,000 people. You've got something off of this relevant post on my wall and say, I am doing physical training and I met Ed and I think that I, I enjoyed his seminar and that I would like to offer my services to the people that are involved with it. Now, I'm a center of influence. I have 30,000 members on 25 score. Huge. Everybody in the brother wants to tap into that. I have 650 merchants that pay me annually to promote them. They are all employers. But as far as going to a, uh, a, a boutique, I'd be considered a whale because I have all these contacts. Only one of those places looking for someone to hire, and you, you're, you're the easiest person to place. 
you work hard and you do executive assistance, you can place. The, the etiquette thing, you can definitely do a seminar on etiquette. I think it's brilliant because I can go into another country and piss them off in five minutes because I don't know that when you go like that, it means I go to the bathroom a lot. <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't know what you don't know. You know, Nixon got off a plane and that means you're all suck. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. He, he, if you don't know where you're going, you better know your audience. That's why I had you all introduce yourself, because if you were all doing um, horse training, a lot of what I said wouldn't have been effective for you. Ed, can I give a success story on Facebook? Sure. Yeah, and you got just a couple minutes to write. Okay. If, you think, if you think about Facebook as a social media avenue to build your business, it's really great. And I want to give you a really great success story. I started working here at uh, like a local catering company out in Santa Cruz Valley. We built our Facebook just to give cooking tips every day. Something really simple, something really relevant that people would enjoy looking at instead of buy one, get one free, or some kind of like junk like that. We had 9,000 friends within four months. Wow. And That's people are sending her bottles of wine to blog about. They're getting our radio shows for free. I mean, that's free media. So if you're thinking about building a training business, post for training tips every day. And I guarantee you, you're going to get a bunch of people that are going to go get online and say, wow, these are some awesome tips, you know? And then they're going to start referring you to their friends, to their friends, and that sort of thing. And you're going to build a, a network enough to get customers on. You write these, these bits, like, for example, fitness tips on your Facebook, like yeah. a blog or something there? Totally, I do. Just, just right on the wall, right on your business wall. Facebook is not free, yeah? LinkedIn, totally free. But you can pay twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Um, just one more thing. I want to give you guys just some short information about the uh, small business, the small business development center here on campus. Have you guys heard of this? It's called the SBDC. It's right here in the university center, and I worked there for about a year as an intern. They give free professional business counseling. And they have 13 different counselors over there, all have their masters or MBA from you know Harvard, UC Berkeley, 30, 40 plus. Santa Cruz years. is awesome with resources, yeah. but terrible in letting the world know. Yeah. So exactly. this building has so much to give you. Come back after this conference and explore. Yeah. And I'll give you I'll give you the card so you guys can give them a call. But let me tell you how much the counseling is. It's free. Zero cost. If you took someone from their MBA from Harvard and said, I want to sit down with you for about 10 hours and talk about me, 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 and my business and you're going to do it for free, they'd probably look at you and tell you you're crazy. But the government pays for this program, and the city pays for this program, and there's banks and private sponsors that pay for this program because they believe in entrepreneurship and having people become employers instead of employees. It just makes sense so, to have educated entrepreneurs around the ones that so I'll give you my, the, the card. It's, it's and, okay.